good evening. I'm Amanda. Um, sorry if this video is a little bit awkward. I'm not real used to doing video blogging. Um, and I'm using a different device. So, I, I was really excited to take this class. I work at San Juan Community College and we don't specialize in online. However, I work in online. And the students I work with, I'm the only one who works with them. So learning about them, being able to interact with them, it's an important piece of my job. So I felt like this course was going to help me in my career. I also was excited to take this course because I'm a parent. And as you guys know, um, the textbook is about raising well-adjusted kids in the age of it's to everything, as Dr. Um, Ozip puts it on his cover. So my aha moment this week came uh, when I, we were reading the first chapter, which happened to be on Monday for me, and it also happened to be in the evening. And when we read about the story between Bobby and Jake, and Dr. Oza explains that this difference between the two of them is is because of the distractions. For me, that was like, aha. Um, I've been trying to put a word on describing how I always feel now. Um, when I speak with my grandparents especially, I always say, is this adulting? Or are, is my generation of parents just completely different because I feel so exhausted and busy? I don't have time for my grandparents. Um, which I do make time, but I feel stressed communicating with them. They're not on social media. They're not on email. They don't text message. Um, and so I have these conversations with them because I feel guilty. Um, I'm not in as good of a contact. Um, so my aha moment was all these distractions. That's the difference now compared to then. And I think Dr. Ozit does a good job describing this between Bobby um, in 1968 and Jake in uh, 2008. I, I think about all of those distractions. Um, when I wake up in the morning now, there's days before I even um, get out of bed. I've checked the weather. I've checked Facebook. I've checked my email. Not just my work email, but my personal email also, and maybe even Moodle. Um, and that's before I'm even out of bed. So today, that's what our kids are experiencing, just like in Jake's example. Constantly texting, receiving communications from their friends in forms of social media, Snapchat, Facebook, IMs, um, text messages, uh, news feeds of all types. So constant distraction coming in when the critical time in their life is building these relationships. Um, they're com always distracted. Uh, text messaging happens around the clock. Uh, for me, when I was a child, I had to wait for the, line li the landline to be open. I remember a time when you called someone else if it was busy. That could be it. That could be your only chance. Um, there wasn't this instant communication. And I think that I realized my aha moment was that this technology is causing us to be so busy and the word is distracted. We don't focus enough on one thing at a time. We might be with our family eating dinner, but we're also checking our phones for messages. Um, we might be engaged in uh, some political tweets on Twitter. There's so many different things that you can multitask and do at once. And it can be very distracting because you want to attend to all these things. You have buzzards and bells going off on your devices. Um, so it's all very distracting. Um, as a parent this week, I was thinking about this distraction over and over, um, how the phones affect my children and especially how they affect me. The other night at dinner, my daughter started complaining, she's 10, um, that her stomach hurt. And she was even thinking about just going straight to bed 
And so my husband and I engaged in this conversation with her. And for Christmas, we did give her an iPhone and her text message went off. And like that, she was engaged in checking that message. And I knew she felt terrible because she did go to bed right afterwards, didn't eat anything. But when that message, that noise went off, she couldn't help but to check that message. She was so excited to tell us that one of her friends from school had texted her. Um, and my husband looked at me and said, I wasn't ready for that. And I was like, yes, these are the distractions that Dr. Oza is talking about. Um, when your friendships are as important as they are to children, no matter how you're feeling, you, you want to see what your friend said. Um, we all remember the disappointment of missing the phone call from our friends, having to wait until the next day um, for them to pass us a note in third period to find out what had happened because we missed a phone call. Um, that doesn't happen for our kids. Even as young as 10, they're automatically connected. Um, I realized how distracting all this can be for parents. I try to manage my kids' uh, social media. Well, they're not on that much social media, but I manage all of their electronics so I know who they're communicating with. And I don't want to add their friends to their devices unless I already know their parents. So I'm on Facebook getting to know the parents at my kids' school. Um... Uh, for Christmas, my son wanted an Xbox so he could play a game with a friend. I even reached out by a text message to that mother asking her, is this the game that they want to play online? Um, the distractions are everywhere. So not only are our kids distracted by it, but it's distracting for his parents to parent in this situation, to, you know, maintain... Uh, learning for our children, using technology. I want to show my children how to communicate, how to be safe. However, um, it's very distracting because I have to make sure that they are, you know, using things safely. I have passwords on everything. They can't download any apps or um, anything in addition on their phone without going through my phone with a Touch ID. And so there's another distraction for me. I have to approve that. So I think technology is amazing. It gives us a wonderful way to do new things, how uh, change things like communications, uh, the way that technology can bring us together. But on the other hand, it's exhausting, it's distracting. And for me, I have to consider how to manage this. And this was my aha. I have to manage it for myself so that I can manage it for my children. Um, I found it very interesting this week. I started some research about how distracted are we, um, how distracted are children, and I came across a website, digitalresponsibility.org, and um, what does that even mean? I like what they had to say. They believe that it's their responsibility to use technology in a way that doesn't harm others and to be aware of the impact that technology has on our health, environment, and society at large. And one of the first articles um, on there, Taking Control of Your Digital Life, is striking a balance between the technology and your life so that you... Um, aren't distracted by the technology. And the first article was how to prevent digital distraction. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I found it very interesting that the Wall Street Journal um, in an article published How Distracting is Technology by Atka Mir. 53% um, of people say that they waste at least an hour a day at work on digital stuff. That's huge, an hour a day. And we're completely distracted. Uh, everyone I know at my uh, work takes their phones with them into meetings. Um, I, I never know if someone's emailing, catching up with their emails, Facebooking, um, I, shopping. They could be doing a variety of things. But I know every time those phones buzz, everyone grabs them and they attend to whatever is happening. Um, best way to reach my boss is via text message. She's always in meetings, different things. So the distraction of technology is 
always there, um, even when we're trying to do scheduled things. So my aha moment for the week is just putting a word to the way that life feels, how technology is causing us to have this huge distraction. Um, I know I use Facebook all the time and that's one of the hardest parts about my job is that because this generation of students that I advise relies so heavily on social media and contact, I have to be available almost always to answer to them. Um, I'm excited about this class because I'm going to learn how to manage that better. We do do things mostly by email, however we do um, social media also. But this morning, for instance, we had a snow delay in our town, and um, when I found that out via a text, the rave system at our institution, it was my job to post that on Facebook immediately so that any advising and counseling um, students would know we weren't going to be in the office until 10 a.m. today. Uh, that's very distracting. I, <laughs> I did not want to wake up, copy the text, do the edit, and post it. Um, but that's part of my job and that's what I do, so I did it. It was very distracting have to, having not gained to roll over. I was a little bit envious of my coworkers thinking, oh, they got the text and they can just go back to sleep. Um, we had some threats one morning um, early and I did not hear my text messages. They didn't awake me. However, when my alarms went off, I noticed text messages right away and I began working that day immediately because my boss had already been in contact um, so we could deal with some threats. So technology, the distractions, um, the immediate nature of it is my aha for the week, putting that into words. So I appreciate your time tonight. Um, again, if my video is awkward, my apologies. And I will um, be looking forward to your replies and your comments. Thank you.